Welcome back for all of you who like the outdoors. This story is for you. An application to allow foreigners to hunt wild animals in selected game reserves is now under consideration. If that's given the green light, it will end a ban that's lasted almost five years. Jones Air reports. Foreigners who enjoy hunting wild animals have been counting the days before they can once again step onto China's game reserves. The long wait might soon be finally over, as seven Americans made their application earlier this year. On Friday, a panel of experts invited by the state forestry administration said yes. Now it's up to the administration to give the nod. The group plans to shoot nine blue sheep and seven Tibetan gazelle in the Bailong International Hunting Ground, both of which are under national protection. The operator of the hunting ground says it will not destroy the animal population. Baolong has over 42,000 blue sheep and more than 1,500 Tibetan gazelle, and hunting is usually only allowed from October to May to avoid the mating and feeding season. If approved, the hunters will be charged 1,200 US dollars for each blue sheep and 1,500 for a Tibetan gazelle. The local authority says it will spend the money wisely. Part of the fee is for the prey, part is for the service. The money will be used to protect wild animals in the ground and province. Technically speaking, hunting was never forbidden in China. There is also no such thing as foreigners only. The wild animal protection laws and regulations in China do not forbid hunting. All citizens can submit applications. In 2006, Plans were drawn up to auction hunting licenses. But such licenses would have only been available to foreigners, given China's strict gun controls. So the auction was later called off, and that's when the hunting stopped. If the ban is lifted, more applications are expected. Four Americans asked us to help them get an approval. They will hunt 10 animals and donate around 400 stuffed animals to a museum in Beijing. It's not just foreigners taking interest. Over the past few years, a number of Chinese hunters have been going after their prey in the game reserves of Pakistan, North America, and even Africa. Zhang Jie, CCTV. Well, for more on a possible lifting of that ban on hunting, we're joined on the phone now by Li Zhi, director of the Shanshui Conservation Center at Peking University here in Beijing. Well, some experts say hunting can actually help protect wildlife. Tell us how is that possible, especially when we're talking about species that perhaps are more endangered. What does that all mean in reality? Uh, what we're talking about is the trophy hunting, to the sport hunting, that uh, hunters pay a high fee to come to hunt usually uh, beautiful animals such as blue sheep, a gully. Um, so the money, as said by the officials, is used properly, uh, especially the money is used to support the local communities, so um, the local hunting might be reduced uh, because these animals can make more money from international hunters. That's what the rationale behind. However, there is, it's critical before any hunting uh, license approved, uh, it has to be, the wildlife population has to be managed and understood through strict monitoring to understand how many an the animals are and how much they, uh, how much birth they give every year and how much die naturally. So you have an idea how many could be hunted uh, so it's not disturbing the wildlife population, uh, make it, making it decline because of the hunting program. Uh, that that's scientifically, theoretically uh, could work. However, the question is how to make them, this management and monitoring really work in the real life. Uh, what's what's um, told this, this news uh, said uh, this hunting facility in Dulai in Qinghai is uh, one of the better managed facilities, but if it's applied elsewhere, the management has to follow or even go ahead to make sure that hunting doesn't really disturb or decline the wildlife population. 
Well, let's stick to some of the upsides of hunting, especially as we say in areas and on game reserves that are being monitored. Some say that it's not the only way to protect wildlife, but it's a good way. And if that's the case, should hunting be encouraged? Well, that's, the, that's another side of the story. As a conservationist, I think, um, personally, I do, li- I do not like uh, that the, the, the point made that conservation has to be done through killing animals. There must, there must be other ways, like setting up better reserves and paying for people to do conservation, even, to, for people to make money out of these animals, and tourism, even. And actually, I think hunting, uh, in some ways, may be conflicting uh, with the tourism, like sighting wildlife, because if you hunt, uh, the animals will become shy. So it's not very easy to view them as easily. But I, do, I did see it. So I, there is two sides of the story. Scientifically, it, uh, if it's manageable, it's possible to benefit the local people, hunt, hunt, trophy hunting uh, is possible to benefit local people, so conservation may, be, may, may happen. Uh, but on the other hand, killing animals may, a lot of people don't like kill, the idea of killing animals, and I'm one of them. I know there's a conservationist also at a leading university. You're keenly watching to see what the government decides. Tell us, what are your expectations? What is your prediction? Do you think that officials will lift this five-year ban on hunting for hunters from other countries? I think this is a test zone that, that you... Well, five years ago when the ban was uh, issued because of the outcry led by media and the public, so I think this is a test to see how people react to it, and then they will decide. That's my guess. Thanks very much, Lisha, speaking to us over there at the Shanshui Conservation Center over at Peking University. Well, let's go now to this story over here. Chinese authorities have unveiled a compensation plan for the many victims.